Hello and welcome to the next part in a series of tutorials where I will be showing you how to plot graphs using Python. In this part, I'll be showing you how to plot scatter plots. So by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create a scatter plot and also edit it according to how you want it to look. So we're going to change the colors of each point. We're going to add some labels. We're going to change the X and Y axis. And we're also going to change the size of each point according to, in this case, the number of participants. But uh, you can change the size of each point according to however you want. So it could be bigger according to how many times this point appears somewhere else. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to create our coordinates. So we need to create a set of X values and a set of Y values. So that's what I've done here. I've created distance underscore meters and I've specified a few values here. And we haven't yet specified whether they're gonna be X or Y. And I've also created another set of values here called time and in there, I've also put some points. And one thing you've got to be careful of is you've got to make sure that the number of points here, which I think is 11, is the same as the number of points in our second set of values as well. Otherwise, the scatter plot will not work. Cool. So after you've created our two sets of values, we're now ready to plot them to our X and Y. So we're going to make use of a function in, in matplotlib.pyplot called scatter. And what scatter does is it is essentially the main function that creates our scatter plot. And how it works is firstly, you type in dot scatter or scatter, and then you specify an X value, then you specify a Y value, and then you specify a few other things like color or size afterwards. Cool. So let's go ahead and plot that. So if we type in PLT, which is what I've called matplotlib.pyplot, and we imported that right in the first video of this series. Cool, so PLT calls our matplotlib.pyplot. We type in plt.scatter, which is our main function. We can now specify our X. In this case, it's time. So we're going to call our time module or time list and then comma specifying our Y values. Now this is distance underscore meters. And then we type in comma. In this case, I've specified the colors of the points. In this case, it's equal to R, which is red. So this is our line, which brings our coordinates together and creates a scatter plot. So all we need to do now is if we go to the is type in plt.show and then we're ready to run and create our first scatter plot. So here we have our very own scatter plot. So if you're following along, well done, you've created your very own scatter plot. But there are a few things I want to point out. So if you look on the y axis, you can see that the values start at 15 and it ends at 45 label wise. Notice that there's a few points, a couple of points that go above 45 and we don't actually, you know, and that could be a bit confusing and misleading. And the same with the X axis, it starts at three and ends at nine. So we need to basically, what I'd recommend is to edit that, um, which we're going to do next to make it a bit easier to read and, uh, and easier for the user to look at, for whoever's looking at this graph to understand. And we're also gonna be adding some labels as well. So let's go ahead and create those additions. So matplotlib.pyplot has a great function called ylim, which allows us to specify the lowest point and the highest point of our y axis. So what we can do is type in plt.ylim and then in brackets and in square brackets type in our lowest point 
which is zero in this case, comma, and then our highest point, which is 60. And be careful here, make sure that your points fit within this boundary of the lowest and the highest. So I can see here that on the y-axis, which is our distance meters, we can see that all the values go between zero and 60. Otherwise, you're gonna cut some values off. Cool, and then we can do exactly the same thing for the x-axis, except type in plt.xlim instead of ylim, and again, making sure that all the values fit between our specified range. Cool, so if we run that now quickly, we can see now that we have our values specified between 0 and 60 and 0 and 10. Nice. Cool, and then now notice that the sort of values, we don't quite, if we're just looking at the graph, we wouldn't know what they mean or what they are. And we don't even know what the graph is about. So let's add a few labels. So if we type in plt.x label, we can now specify a title for the x-axis. In this case, in quotation marks, I've specified time in seconds. And we can also do the same thing for the y-axis. So we're typing in y label instead of x label. And also, we can give the whole chart a name by typing in plt.title and then in brackets and quotation marks giving a title. In this case, random scatter plot. So if we run this again, we can now have our labels on our axes. We've got random scatter plot as our title, distance meters on the left, and time seconds on the bottom. Very nice. Cool. And you can do other things as well. You can add grid lines as well if you wanted to. And you can add labels within the for each point themselves. And there's so many things you could do. But we're just going to keep it simple and we're just going to keep the labeling at that for this tutorial. Cool. So let's now go one step further and sort of add an extra dimension to this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create another set of values called participants. And so if this was like a race, I don't know, distance, time distance, and then we had sort of the number of participants who did those distances in those times, let's say. And so we've got here, you know, a set of values that represents that. We can now plot participants as well. And in this case, participants is going to be the size of each point. So where we have our X and Y values here, that specifies like a, a coordinate, like a point. The participant is gonna represent the size of the point. So let's go down and create. So in the PLT scatter, dot scatter we had here, above here, we had time, distance, meters, and then color equals R. But what you can also add is another dimension called S, which is size, and we can specify the size of the part, the each point. Well, in this case, it's participants. So if we type in just put S equals participants in between the sort of our Y value specified and the color, we can now specify the size of each participants. So if we put color equals R to make them red, keep them red, we can now run this and we'll get the size of each participant. Oh, that's very small. So notice all the values here come out really, really small. So we now need to, let's change the size to make it a bit more visible. So what we can do is we can basically, at the most simplest, we can just basically put participants times 100 and make to times every one of these values by 100. Probably if you're going to sort of code this and have this done not in a sort of tutorial video, you'd probably have a function that increases the, the size of each point by 100. But to keep things more as simple as possible, we're just going to be um, creating another group with all those values times by 100. So if you can go type in participants, calling the name of the new variable times 100, and run it again, 
the values, the sizes should be much bigger now. And that is exactly what we can see here. Each value have been magnified by a hundred times. Cool. Now, notice that all the values are in red and we would quite like to know, to, to distinguish a bit more between each participant. And we can do that. We can specify sort of colors by using NumPy. So if we go to the top, remember we've imported NumPy right at the start, along with matplotlib.pyplot, and we've given it the alias NP. So NP is calling our NumPy module. So if we type in np.array, and then in square brackets, we can specify a load of colors. So we've got red, green, blue, yellow, and so on, pink, basically 11 colors for each of the points. Notice that as we go along, we're always making sure that the set of values is the same in each of these lists. And that's something you've got to be very aware of. And notice that the colors are in string. Each of the colors are sort of in strings. So red is in quotation marks, green, blue, and so on. And what we can do now is we can change color equals R to color equals colors. And then that will call our NP array that we've created for all those colors. And so when we now plot it, we will get a very nice array of colors here, like a rainbow, look at that. So now we've distinguished a bit more between each participant. Cool. And another thing we can actually do is we can change these colors to be a bit more of like a, a color bar. So let's now get these out and we can now specify, sort of change our NumPy array to instead of being individual colors to be values between this in this case, zero and a hundred. And we can now change our colors, our color variable, instead of being color equals colors, it's C equals colors. And then after this type in C map equals Viridis, which is a type of C map. And so what we're doing now is we're adding a color map. So C map stands for color map. And the viridis is a type of color map. And that's why we need to change color to C because it's C matches the C here in C map. And so they're able to map together to create a very nice color map. And another thing we'll need to do is we can add a label for our color bar so we can reference it against each other. So if you type in plt.color bar and then in leave have an empty set of brackets. We've now, we're now ready to plot a sort of color bar with a color map for each one of our points. So if we run this now, and this will be our final run, we can see here now that we've added a color bar on our right as our sort of label, our edit. And we've also got a color map of all of our points here. Cool. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it and learned a lot about creating scatter plots. All I've done is touch the surface, especially on scatter plots. There's so many more things you can do. And I really encourage you to um, look over this tutorial if you got a bit confused at points and make sure you're really familiar with creating scatter plots and other graphs. And also look at my other videos as well. I always go through step by step and in as much detail as I can and trying to make it understandable as possible. But also look at the documentation as well that they have and look at sort of um, other videos as well, really sort of solidify your knowledge of creating graphs in Python because that's one of the things that Python is really good for. Cool, so please subscribe to my channel, please do let, other people know about this channel if you think they may benefit from this and please do like and comment below. Thank you very much for watching.